All right, March 4th, 2022. And uh, tell you what, um, you know, everybody is really concerned right now about the prices of inputs. And, you know, I've dealt with this uh, for a lot of years. And I got to tell you what, I've never been able to afford traditional commodity market-based inputs and it is really a system that I've never been able to pencil out as a full-time farmer. I know that majority of farmers at least I think are buying heavy commercialized inputs and when I mean that I mean um, um, input products like chemicals for uh, um, routine uh, herbicides and things like that, which which those those pencil out, but and those make sense. You you definitely without those on a large scale for the majority of producers how they farm, they're not going to get a crop if you don't have um, um, agrochemical type inputs. But the title of my talk at the talk here uh, the agrochemistry industrialized complex more refers to i guess i'm a target fertilizer inputs uh growth promotants things like that we've done a good job with uh certain types of agrochemicals that have you know on the herbicide type uh front i don't uh, but then they i think you go too far when you're really into the fungicides on field crops and insecticides those those are just going to cost um, a lot of environmental damage i think in the long run and then though we're getting into you know i think fertilizer we've gone too far with uh, genetics we've done a really good job on there's great improvements in genetics it's improved the yields drastically but the uh beyond that these annual inputs of fertilizer I just don't see how that pencils out. That's a major expense. And when you do those major expenses like that, the if you don't have risk mitigation to account for poor crop production years, you, uh, you they don't pencil out. So that has developed programs like crop insurance, which is fine if it's private crop insurance, but the government's got its hands in, uh, you know, government subsidized crop, government backed crop insurance, which is basically robbing a certain segment of the population, uh, particularly out competing farmers like me that don't have crop insurance and don't get government subsidies. You are, you're robbing me to pay for somebody else's crop insurance. And then, sure, they can pay their operating loans. It guarantees they're going to probably get a, a minimum payment. And when they get that, that minimum payment, they can at least pay their cost. When a guy like me goes and buys $10,000 of potash to only put on a partial amount of acreage, like I did last year, and it was stupid. It was really stupid of me to do this. And it only covered 154 acres. And you know what? On most of that acreage, I got one cutting. We had killing frost in mid-May. Absolutely devastated first cutting grass production by, you know, over 50% in a lot of cases. And then, turn out, then we had really droughty weather following that. Then followed by mid to late summer, constant rain. One harvest. One harvest on acreage. There was no risk protection for me. Nothing to fall back on. So putting those expensive chemistry inputs in the form of potash, urea, whatever type of phosphate you're going to put on, it, it, it didn't, it, no benefit, whatever. I've always gone the low risk, low input route, 
of compost and manures. It's a low yield, but it's a low risk. You don't get all your acreages covered every year. And, but at the same time, your margins don't have to be, um, I mean, you, you don't have to make those margins to cover fertilizer. You might still have the same percentage margins, but you don't have the same output. It's just not as much money up front. It's more of a gradual, small cash flow and fuel and equipment operating cost. It, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot more time to put bulky fertilizers on versus, um, you know, granulated you know it's it but it's it's it just it's it's i can make profit and i've been doing it that way for 30 years i've never been able to pencil out fertilizer i was at an msu michigan state university extension field day uh, a couple years ago and they said nitrogen fertilizer only penciled out on hay ground uh you got exactly the amount of yield is what you paid in it based on what the cost of the fertilizer was so this egg what I'm, I'm saying is we're being hijacked by the agricultural uh chemistry industrialized complex um tied in with the food industry because the food industry has adopted uh these cheap foods these cheap surplus commodity foods that we don't we produce a surplus and a lot of them are foods that humans generally don't eat as a main staple of their diet but have recently been you know in 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 recent century here have been included in the human diet only because of their cheap availability cheap avail availability made by the government by subsidizing and propping up these farms that have now become less diversified larger it hasn't been good for the farm community. It's been good for the big farmers that are still surviving. Those big farmers, obviously, what you're seeing today are the better operators. They got a sharper pencil and they're better at what they do. And they're taking full advantage of this. Uh, but there's other things we could do to, to mitigate this. There's, there's um, you know, we could go for a lower input, but same profit margin, producing a healthier soil okay versus high yields um you know as i said none of this cost stands on its own every one of you that thinks fertilizer pays and let's just talk about hay because that's what i do i do hay okay um don't know enough about anything else to to really say much about it but the problem there is you guys are doing you guys and gals doing hay be honest if you didn't have another job or something to pay those risks would it would that fertilizer input always pay off every year and when you're a person like me that only farms and has nothing uh, to fall back on I'm gonna say there's not hardly any years what would pay off pays off maybe on um, some really good soils if you inherit a good farm and if you only did part of a part of a farm something like that um, but what are our options so you know low input but increased profit uh, quit quit the subsidies okay um, change crops do a conforming crop production system okay uh, farmers would be forced to if the government wasn't propping them up and we, we could wean ourselves from this agrochemistry industrialized complex, they'd be forced to grow crops people actually need. We wouldn't have all the surplus corn. You know, these, these uh, it's a vicious cycle. The more that they, the, the better inputs and improvements you put on, the, sure, we got record production, but we, then the prices keep dropping, okay? I mean, I can't even sell, my cattle are going the same price they were selling for 20 years ago. Okay, something's wrong with the system. Why can't we be like other retailers, okay? Uh, and, and actually actually make a good, a good living if you're a small, non-government subsidized farmer. We, we've been bullied it, with this term and we believe it, but I don't believe it. It's a cognitive dissonance, I believe, again, that we have to feed the world. We have plenty of food in this world. There's not a, 
there's not a food under production uh, situation. Um, when you hear about populations in geographic regions of the world starving, it's usually a product of geopolitical uh, inefficiency of the food, food delivery system. And a lot of times this same agrochemistry process, uh, complex has allowed cheap exports from the world, like U.S. Uh, grain production to be imported into a country uh, at a low price, destroying their native product uh, market that could be a healthier, more uh, sustainable product for those people in that region to eat, but their farmers can't afford to make a living either because of that, uh, that those global shipments of cheap, subsidized, imported, uh, um, mass production farm products. There's a lot of things we could do. So uh, grow different crops, um, you know, annual versus perennial crops. Hay is a great example, right? Perennial, there's a reason why small farmers like me probably, I mean, think about it. You grow a perennial hay crop, uh, you have a lot less inputs already, a lot less equipment, hardware, cost, fuel, and things like that, off-farm inputs, than uh, somebody who's growing a, a uh, you know, a big row crop system. So my two cents, but really common if you, if you how as a hay producer, hay only, no off farm job, are you, sub, are you, are you continually uh, being able to pay for fertilizer, for granulated commercial uh, synthetic type fertilizers? And how does it pay? Because I, I know in, in Michigan here, I sit on our, our forage council board, uh, we've got some of the really big hay producers, they want, a, they want an alfalfa checkoff, which there is a voluntary checkoff, I think. And keep, keep in mind, a lot of these checkoffs, we have them in a lot of other industries. Um, there's a corn and soybean checkoff. I don't know if those are mandatory, they probably are. <coughs> how about the beef checkoff? Anybody uh, pay to the uh, beef industry a uh, dollar per head every time you sell an animal, which is supposed to be law? That's been, that hasn't been, you know, great for the industry, if anything. So if cattle are cheap, beef is cheap, we got too much beef in the country. That's, that's you know, capitalism works great if, you, um, if it's a free market. But right now, we, we truly don't have free market. We have, um, you know, I don't know that capitalism and the term free market are synonymous with each other. A lot of people think it is because, you know, a lot of people like to point to our failures of why we should be socialist or communist of anytime something in capitalism goes bad. Well, maybe capitalism isn't isn't the best answer. Maybe true economic free market is, you know, I guess I wish I would have paid more attention to my macroeconomics class when I took that. So I knew the terminology. But all right, thanks for tuning in. And I really would like advice from these other, from some of you viewers and some other inputs. Thank you.